Okay, today I'm making some pen blanks. Um, I'm going to do a Celtic knot pattern, and this is sort of some of what I've learned from doing it. I've got myself set up a jig so I can reproduce the cut that I'm going to put in. I've already put the first diagonal cut in, um, and I've produced this jig. It'll hopefully mean that I can just reproduce that cut endlessly as I rotate the blank round and cut in from the different sides. Um, the main thing I've learned from doing this over the years is when you do the cut, the most important thing is not to cut all the way through. I hope you can see that on camera. And just leave that tab. It just helps align things, keeps everything in register on your original blank and makes the gluing up and clamping a lot, lot easier. So I'm now going to cut the second line in, having done the first. So that goes opposite the first line I've cut. So it's all jigged up, so I should just be able to push up against the backboard, tie it up against the guide here, and then make another cut diagonally through and get the same diagonal. There you go, so just careful not to cut through that last section. And I've made up some thin veneers that will go neatly into that slot. So I'm going to glue that in place and then we'll get on to the next cut. So what I'm going to do is just put some glue along the top of the cut then use the sort of shim material. the glue down into the joint, uh, get it all nice and squared up, pushed home and then as I said one of the advantages of doing it this way is when it comes to clamping everything's held nicely in place and in register you don't get that attempt for the whole thing to just try and slide apart and there we go, get it nice and tight and leave that to glue. Okay well we could just stop there, I've got the, the crisscross and that will produce quite interesting simple Celtic knots but I'm going to take this up and do it so we've got four pieces of wood actually grafted in there uh, so I'm going to do it across this face with a cross as well. I'm just going to clean that up and then I'll be ready to start cutting the other slots and gluing the other pieces in. What I'm going to do is really clean these up now, try and just sand them down flush, I'm just going to get rid of some of this glue. Um, but I think it would be nice if they were sitting flush before I started trying to cut any pieces of it, so let's give that a go. Okay, so as we did before, make sure it's against the, the markings on the back and uh, cut the first piece but again not going all the way through. Glow in that joint and then just push it home, square it up and put the clamp back on. A bit of squeeze out there, excellent. So, looks like we've got enough glue in the joint. And because I'm using a curve the same as a bandsaw, it's actually really easy just to snap these off um, and I can clean it up and use it for the last cross. Okay, so the pen blank's made. Uh, I'm sort of planning to have it that way around. You grip it. So I want to get the centre of this end. I'm just going to join those two corners together to get the middle. And I'm going to mount it and drill a hole through. Okay, so I probably can't quite see that on camera. There's my centre. If I just punch that now with an awl, brattle. Uh, I'm not happy with that, that's not quite central enough. Let's try that one. That looks better. Right, so I'm now going to chuck my it. So that's chuck mounted. 
and I'm going to use initially this to get the centre established just while we're then tightening up good and solid around the blank. Right, so first off I'm going to start by drilling a short hole um, just to establish the direction. I've tried using longer drill bits, tends to leave them wandering. So we're going to back out the centre and put my Jacob's chuck in its place. Bring it up but not quite touching. And start the lathe up. Nice slow speed. Just gently bring the drill up. <laughs> now I've got a, a longer drill bit which will meet reach most of the way into it, not all the way through unfortunately. Okay, so I've got it mounted into uh, just a little Jacob's chuck on a handle. Gently working it, bit at a time. So I've got it down to about there. Now that's going to be plenty long enough for a fill piece, oh, sorry, a refill piece. Might even do that in English. That's going to be plenty long enough for a refill. Um, so I'm pretty sure I got that down the centre. But what I've had with previous blanks is you drift off a bit and then as you're turning it you punch through the side of the, of the hole. So what I'm actually going to do is cut this off and expose the other end, which might sort of go against thing, uh, against people's principles, but uh, I'm going to give it a go. So I'm going to punch, cut it off about there, expose the other hole, and I'm going to chuck mount along the hole rather than along the blank, so that hopefully the hole will end up in the middle of the blank rather than what I hope is the middle from here. Okay, so for now, mark where the end of that drill falls. And then I'm going to cut that off on the bandsaw. And there we go. Now, you see what I mean about the hole? Although I set out with good intentions with that being at the middle. It's very off by the time I get to the other end of the blank. So what I'm now going to do is chuck it along the line of that. And then what I'll do is make a back piece to fill in at the end and cover over that hole. We'll see that as we go along. Right, let's get this chucked up. So what I've done is I've mounted it between a drive spur, which is on the, the centre of the hole, and between the, the headstock here, which is also centred on the hole. And as you can see, it's quite out of square, which is why I do it this way. Now I can rescue this without... Uh, I mean, it come out the side. So the next job is going to be start shaping that pen up. Um, I'll give you a better view as I do that. You can see from the, the above angle just how out of true that is. But what I'm going to do is uh, put it back into true around that centre I drilled through, and that should uh, even things up a bit. What I'm not so sure about is how well it's going to handle about a bit of this pattern, but we'll see how we get on.
Right, having got it roughly into round, I'm now going to turn it round because actually this is a, a piece of pen I'm going to cap over at the end, whereas this end needs to be quite fine and quite detailed. So I'm going to just back this away, make that dry centre out now because I don't really need it. What I can do instead is just mount the piece straight into the jaws. Actually, setting thoughts, I might even stay on that drive head for a bit. So we're just going to spin it round and I'm going to work on what will be the business end of the pen, the bit where it's held and therefore the bit I want to have really nice and smooth. Now why is that so far off? I've missed a hole somewhere I think. Nope. That's on. Okay, well, good job I spun it round now. Because that's uh, distinctly off true. And the drive head was sitting quite well enough. So, let's get it back into round properly this way. Okay, I need to go down a bit on the Celtic design, uh, just to get that fully exposed as a pattern. Um, I'm going to leave this reasonably thick as a pen, it's going to be a bulky one, but I quite like the chunky pens. Need to go a bit deeper just to expose that last little bit of the, the knot pattern. Okay, so that's the knot pattern pretty well exposed. Now I'm just going to do some rough shaping, but I think I'm going to change over tools to a scraper. That's the round scraper, so I just need to drop the rest a bit for this. On to the next stage, but I want to sand this down quite fine. I'll go down to about 800 grit on this. Anyway, I'll see you after the uh, sanding's done. Okay, I've sanded it all back now uh, to 800. Uh, I've left it a little bit uh, unfinished, but I'm now going to attach the piece on the back and then uh, I'll come back and finish it all up at the end. So, we take the pen off. What I now need to do. is to establish a little piece for the back. So now I'm using the same contrasting wood. Okay, so I'm just going to roughly centre this piece. Um, doesn't need to be accurate because I'm only using such a small piece of it, it's just a little scrap. Uh, roughly centred and then I'll just turn it so it's round. Mm. 
like I said, very rough. Um, and now what I'm going to do is take it out, take it off that drive spur, and put it straight into the chuck. So I've got a good grip of it. Use the centre to square it up before I tighten it off. Right, so what I now need to do is just make a little pin that will align itself with that. Um, and I can join the two together. In fact, I need to square that up a little bit. Squared off that end, hopefully leaving just a tiny little nib, which will help me align everything. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. And now I need to glue that in place. So I'm going to put a dab of good old regular wood glue, glue it up, and then leave it overnight to make a good firm bond. And we'll come back to this tomorrow. Okay, night's passed. Sorry, you're going to have to excuse the noise. We've got builders in next door working on the neighbour's extension. Subtle as ever. Okay, um, so it's glued up now. And the final pen piece. So I'm just going to do some turning, get this turned into an interesting shape as the back end of this pen and the contrasting wood uh, and then sand it all up and part it off. So that said let's get on, this video is getting long enough. Okay, pretty happy with that. So let's get it sanded up and parted off. Okay, so again we've sanded back. I'm now going to put some shellac sanding sealer on it. Um, and that again will get sanded back to 800. Amazingly fast drying stuff, I've said it before. That's our first coat dried. I'm going to put a second coat on to try and build up a good thickness before sanding back. I'm not sure I get it right onto the ends. You can really see the grain starts to pop now. for the final coat. Now I'm going to use Hampshire Sheen. I'll use the high gloss. I have been getting on really well with this product. Um, I do like it. Um, gives a nice finish also quite a nice tactile feel as well. Well, 
hope you can see that's come up really nice and shiny. I'm just going to part off the end, hand sand and hand finish the little nib I'll have left and then I'll show you the end result. And there we have the end product. Um, reasonably pleased with it. Now I've got to do is remember what I did with all those uh, refills I had. There we go. See you in the next video.